Hey, how's it going, everybody? This is Joey Galvez, one half of your host of Explain Yourself, and I want to let you guys know about a really cool book from our friend of the show, Eli Shockey. This one is called The Grey Luck, and it's a story where magic is a commodity. Potions are sold at corner stores. Orcs and dwarves earn a living in cubicles, not on the battlefields. But there are those who resist the house's magic laws, branded a criminal and forced to live as a want for hire. There is a spell slinger they call the Greylock. Check this one out. You guys can pre-order issue three right now with code JAN241939. And make sure you guys are heading over to your favorite LCS and letting them know that you want Greylock number three and maybe pick up the first two issues. Uh, you could do that at the Scout web store. So make sure you guys are grabbing the Greylock number three, JAN241939 at previewsworld.com. Okay, everybody, I have something really cool to tell you about. If you haven't heard yet about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain here. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will uh, distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one single place. Now, the way that you can do this is you got to download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and then you can get started. It's really fun. We just switched over recently here at All Too Real 2 and I'm enjoying it so far. So be sure to check it out and uh, let us know what you think. Okay, everybody, welcome to the All Too Real 2 podcast. I am your host, Michael E. Cullen II, and with me, as always, is Matthew Haas, my hey. co-host. Hi. Hi, Matt. Hi. How are you, sir? I am a bit of a uh, mental haze right now. Very fuzzy. Uh, not sure what to think or make of anything that we have just watched. Yes. It's um, very confusing to me right now. Folks, we uh, just witnessed something. I don't know if I can call it a movie or not. <laughs> um, we watched this thing on Netflix. It was called George of the Jungle 2. Because the first one was so great, they needed to make a sequel. Direct to video. Direct to video. <clears throat> I like it. how you called it a thing. I think that's good enough. Yes. You watch the thing on, on Netflix. Yes. I'm not sure if it's a movie, but it's definitely put on film or at least video. Yeah, probably film at the time. I don't know. Yeah. This, this came out in 2003. <laughs> yeah. The first movie came out in 1997. Uh, this came out in 2003. Um. Uh, yeah, uh, it's it's so, just so so plot. Is there much of one? I mean, <laughs> it's just seemed like scene. It just seemed like a bunch of scenes that were thrown together that had a, maybe a modicum of continuity to them. But even at that, not so much. I mean, the the but, basic. Um. 
the basic plot I'm getting here is okay. Here's what here's what I, I get off of um, from uh, user the fox dash two on um, IMDb. I'm gonna give credit to who said this. Okay, this is their synopsis of the movie, um, and IMDb is the Internet Movie Database for those that don't know. Anyways, um, it's been five years since socialite uh, Ursula Stanhope left civilization to marry George, lovable and clumsy king of the jungle. Now, father to George Jr., George finds himself stressed at having to juggle his cherished role of Jungle King, Jr.'s dad, and Ursula's loving husband. George, George's, I mean, George's stress level goes way up when Really Mean Lion challenges him. That's his name, Really Mean Lion. Wow. Challenges him for leadership of the jungle. And Ursula's mother, Beatrice, teams up with Ursula's ex fiance Lyle, in a plot to uh, forcibly take away all that George holds most dear. That makes it sound better than, than, than what, what it watched. actually is. Yeah. Yes. Um, That's like the church subversion of what we saw. And, and the tagline for this movie was, watch out for that sequel. Mm. And I like that tagline because, yeah, watch out for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If it's coming at you, <laughs> watch. Avoid it. Yeah. Just, just walk away. <laughs> you know, turn off the television. Yeah. You know, go walk out in traffic. Do something <laughs> else instead of watching yes. this movie. This movie was absolutely terrible. Like we usually ask each other at the end of the podcast. Would you recommend this movie? I'm going to do it right now. No, I would not recommend this movie to anyone ever. And, and anybody that listen, that watched it prior to listening to this podcast, which you really don't have to, but if you did, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm really sorry. Uh, there's too much to unpack. I, I don't even know what okay. – I didn't write anything down. I'm just going yeah, by we, memory. We, we just watched this yeah. like five minutes ago, yeah. so it's like still fresh in our heads kind of. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Um, so, okay. So in this in this movie, Brendan Fraser did not come back. Um, we have George being played now by Christopher Sh- Showerman. Showerman. I don't know. It's S H O W E R M A N. And this was his first film. He's a you know pretty boy. Brendan Fraser kind of look alike. Sort of. Sort Looks of. Looks a little bit like enough like him to you know play the part of George. Um, we also have, instead of uh, Leslie Mann as Ursula, we've now got Julie Benz, who people may know from the Buffy and Angel series. As uh, She uh, she played, uh, who'd she play on that? She was a vampire. Um, I used to be more into Buffy. Now I, she was also in Dexter for a while, too, as uh, Rita Bennett, Rita Morgan. Um, I never really watched Dexter, so I don't know. But uh, she was... Um, in uh like I said in, in um she was in a lot of things, Boondock Saints to Punisher Warzone. Bunch of sequels here, it looks like. Um <laughs> eight millimeter two, another direct video sequel that we may cover on here someday. Um yeah, she played Darla. That was the name of the character on Angel and Buffy. And, you know, I always had a huge crush on Julie Benz. I just want to make sure that that's clear. And I do not hold this movie against her. If you would like to work with me in the future, <laughs> Julie Benz, I'd be more than happy to cast you in a movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That being said, what were you thinking? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it looked better on paper. Yeah, I mean, we do have Thomas Hayden Church returning as Lyle Van de Groot. Van de Groot. What is it with, like, villains in movies having, like, Van at the beginning of their know. last something... name? Like, because wasn't there, like, Van de Camp or something in that, uh, yeah. in, in, um, that American Pie movie we watched? Like, yeah. kind of villain Van, in that. Yeah, Van yeah. Camp, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's stupid. Anyways, now we got, uh, the, uh, voice of Ape is, uh, John Cleese, who did the voice in the first movie. Yeah, just, just want to remind people that, uh, it's John Cleese, <clears throat> the well-respected comedic actor John Cleese. And I want to go back to, uh, you know, Thomas Hayden Church, you know, who was nominated for several awards when he was on the TV show Wings. He, uh, after this, was nominated for an Academy Award, won several awards for the movie Sideways, along with other 
several different awards that he's been nominated for throughout his career. And he's in George of the Jungle, too. And that movie, Sideways, came out a year later after yes. this movie. And in this movie, he's hopping around going, I got the deed, I got the deed. Yeah. Hopping around like some idiot. That's later in the movie. Yes. And, uh, you know what? I'm not even going to go wait, I don't care this. about continuity of this. Or, like, We're not going to. Yeah. <laughs> no, this, this podcast, I'm not going to go run through the plot in, in any kind of um, linear fashion. It's just going to be whatever thought that we come up with that we can remember. Like I said, this movie has everything that you could think of being wrong in a movie. And again, it's kind of meant for kids somewhat. I mean, I guess you could put this on for your children if you don't care about their education. But they promote uh, bestiality in it. Oh, uh, yeah. That's the, the weird part about it's, this. There's a few weird things in this movie. But A gorilla has sex with a human woman. Implied, but again, this is Disney. Implied. And they care about their image. Oh, yeah, because, you know, James Gunn. <clears throat> James, James James Gunn gets fired for for ten year old tweets. Yeah, but, pedophilia. You know, but you know, you can make gorillas, a movie where you imply can, that a gorilla is going to have sex a, with a woman. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> actually, two women actually, because yeah. it's implied that the 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 mother of the is basically uh, raped by a gorilla. Yeah. So that that one was not consensual. The other one was. So okay. Or should I say ape? I don't want to. I don't know. Is ape and gorilla different? I don't you know. know what what, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I come. We, we come from America, so we didn't learn much about science. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, and our president doesn't believe in it. Anyways, <laughs> um, let's go. Um, <laughs> wow. I said it. And I even said it. Come at me, bro. Come Bi- at me. I should have said <laughs> biology, not science. Idiot. Yeah, okay. It, that, that, proves, that is a science. That, I know, but. So, yeah. But. It proves that I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyways, anyways um, so we, we have, uh, we also have um, Beatrice Stanhope, who is uh, Ursula's mother. Um, this time being played by Christina Pickles. Um good name yes christina pickles it's, she's a very well-respected actress she was on saint elsewhere and she played uh ross and rachel's mom on friends oh, okay and yeah. she was also uh she was also on um i believe on some episodes of how i met your mother among other things you know she she was very you know very well respected comedic actress and uh dramatic actress as well i like her a lot in most things She's really good at playing kind of a bitchy, you know, for lack of a better word, um, strong, villainous type woman. Like very, as she did here. Very scheming. Yeah, or or, like... or just like the the or really good at playing a ritzy uppity woman. Yeah. She she's a. Uh, I know she's originally from England, so yeah, she's she's British originally mm. too. So, but grew up in the United States, I think. But um. Yeah, I mean, she's done a lot of things. She was in the movie Romeo and Juliet. She was in The Wedding Singer. She's still, you know, making a lot of, you know, she's in the TV series Doubt that's out right now. She's done a lot of voices on um, Family Guy. She's she's done a lot. So it's not to, you know, hold that against her either, this yeah. movie. Uh, the writers, I can hold it against. Or, yeah, I mean, whatever. there could be a lot of factors that came into yeah. this. Who knows if they actually even had a script? Um, <laughs> it doesn't look like it. Actually, I don't know. I think they just kind of improvised this one. Maybe. Yeah. We we also have the late Michael Clark Duncan as Mean yeah. Lion. Yeah. As the voice of Mean Lion, rest in peace. Um. The voice of uh. Voice of Rocky the kangaroo. Is John Kasser, who also was Armando the hypnotist. Mm. So he played two roles in wow. this movie. So, and people may know him. I just wanted to bring him up because he was the crypt keeper in, ta- in Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I know him most <laughs> wow. from. So yeah. So he's a kind of <laughs> part of my childhood. So because <laughs> I used to stay up late watching Tales from the Crypt and stuff. And so yeah. Um, but uh, in this one, we were introduced to George Jr., played by Angus T. Jones, which most people would know from uh, as the half a man in Two and a Half Men, <laughs> and uh, show that was on the air way too long. Anyways, <laughs> um, uh, Chuck Glory. Yes, I do like Mom though. 
Oh, he did, he did Mom? Yeah. That's a good show. I do like Mom. I like Dharma and Greg as well. He did that one. Okay, that's good. All right, yeah. fine. So, But <laughs> we're not going to go into the fact right. that he made my least favorite sitcom of all time. <laughs> or maybe my second. Yeah. He made, um, yeah. <clears throat> it's It's something about an idea of some sort. Yeah. And um, an explosion or something like that. The sky or something. Yeah, yeah something. Yeah. Like. Anyways, and then, um, yeah. But my least favorite sitcom of all time was something about um, a couple of uh, women that didn't have a lot of money. Mm. He did that, too. No, he didn't. But that's my least. Oh, okay. But that is my least favorite sitcom yeah. of all time. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Two broke girls. Anyways. Uh, yeah, um, I know. No, I know. <laughs> I'm not, not a yeah. fan either. Uh, no. Anyways, um, I like the actress with the brown hair though. She's she's been some, she was in the Forty Year Old Virgin. Um, I don't know her name. I'm not good with names. Um, except yeah. for like really really famous people, but I'm not good with like names of like, you know, like Robin Williams. So I'm gonna know that name, but when it comes but to yeah. actors, who, who are you act- asking about? You know the, the woman with the black hair and two broke girls. She was in Forty Year Old Version. She's I like her. Oh yeah, and other stuff she's been. I, I like a lot of these people. Yeah. Like, like I've said before, in that other show that I was talking about that Chuck Lorre mm-hmm. produced, um, I really like everybody in that cast. Mm-hmm. I think they're all brilliant actors. I just think that show should have ended at like season two. Yeah, it, you, it's like. I don't know. I don't want to go into, you know, maybe we should start our own, um, you yeah. know, podcast that just talks about why Mike doesn't like uh, Big Bang Theory. <laughs> but um, we'll uh, <laughs> we'll uh, go at, episode after episode. Yeah, we'll go. We'll go through and watch every. No, I don't <laughs> no, want to no, no, do no. that to myself. There's like over two hundred of them. Yeah, uh, and it's going to be on for like twenty more. Yeah, years it is. Or it something. will be. Yeah, then there'll be a spinoff. Well, there already is one for Sheldon. Oh yeah, but then there'll be another spinoff for Leonard or something like that or Howard. There we go. We need a Howard and and um, Raj spinoff show, yeah, where they start their own university. I don't. Whatever. Who cares? Um, we, we we should uh, spin them off and have them uh, open up a general store in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I don't know why that would. And then just like what? <laughs> what the... so, like, hey, you know, just you know, kind of a boring life. There's there gonna be no Thai restaurants there, probably. Yeah, and Sheldon never lets them order Thai food, apparently. Because he, he apparently he has something against Thai people, kind of a racist, but whatever. He's okay with Chinese people, but not Thai people. I'm not sure why. But um, you know way more about this show than I do. I do more <laughs> because back in the when it was first like a hit, my dad loved it and he'd watch it all the time. Yeah. I'd just be stuck, you know. I'd come home from like park or whatever or at work, and then there it is. I'm like. Mm. Hi, folks. This is Michael Lee Collin the second from the podcast that you're listening to right now, along with manager Matthew Haas. You got promoted? Yes. Damn it. Okay. Anyways, um, folks, uh, do you like the show Superstore? Well, I don't know. I asked the folks and nobody's answering because well, they're not here. Oh, but we love damn it. it. Yeah, we love it, though. Okay, folks, if you like it as much as we do. You're really going to like the Super Story podcast, which is a podcast where Matthew and I go uh, episode by episode and give our little opinions and thoughts on it. Uh, Sometimes we have guests, sometimes we don't. Um, Just depends on how we're feeling. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so if you like this podcast and like our little crazy banter, then you should definitely check this out. Or I might get sad. And when I get sad, it gets pretty sad. So yeah, I can't deal with him when he's sad. Yeah, no one can really. So um, yeah. So, so check out a uh, Super Story podcast right here, where you get this podcast, Super Story podcast. We'll be right back to our review in a minute here. But uh, the other day we uh, sat down and um, talked with Kennedy Phillips about his audio drama Magus Elgar, among other things. Um, he's a great guy. It was a fun interview, and um, here it is. Everybody, I uh, would like to welcome uh, Kennedy Phillips here to the. Uh, all to interview portion of the all too real two podcast um 
How are you doing today, uh, Kennedy? I'm doing fantastic. I hope you guys are doing well also. Yep, great. Doing great. So um, you're here to talk about uh, your uh, new, um, your, well, newish uh, audio um, audio uh, drama called uh, Magus Elgar, well, comedy drama, whatever you want to call it, uh, audio uh, show. I don't know how you would, what would you uh, categorize that as? <laughs> I mean, audio fiction works. Uh, audio drama is kind of a standard term, regardless yeah. if it's a comedy or a drama. Yeah, that's what I figured. I was just making sure people know that it's a comedy and not a drama. Just because I know. Some yeah, people. most people, most people kind of get that a little bit scrambled. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you got uh, started in the uh, like in, in entertainment in general? Well, I always wanted to be uh, an entertainer uh, from a very young age. Uh, I did a lot of um, improv to entertain my parents when we were on the boat. Uh, when I used to live on a sailboat, um, we uh, I, I took drama courses. I, I made short films when I was like 12 or 13. All of them terrible, obviously. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I got to college, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I, I wanted to go into film and uh, make a movies of some kind. I mean, my, my true passion was towards making uh, animation, but um, I, I couldn't really draw. Uh, I, I have uh, I'm diagnosed with something called dysgraphia which is this condition where it's kind of like it's kind of like dyslexia but from your brain to your hand like it just makes everything that you try to do all scrambled and stuff and it takes a lot of focus to get it down right so um one thing that i did have a skill for though was uh for sound um for voice acting for um design for sound effects and foley art and i went and got my master's degree in film production with editing and and sound design as my emphasis and the rest is kind of history i've mostly been doing odd jobs here and there up until the point where i decided i want to make my own show i actually have dysgraphia as well so i understand what you're going through yeah so yeah i was just curious um what was the uh like um process like of uh creating uh mega selgar and everything like how how long did it take to come up with all the uh the, the ideas behind it and casting and all of that well making the entire production took a lot longer than it probably should have it took me about two to three years mostly because i i had my day job that i need to take care of and i need to focus on that but for the actual process of creating a lot of the ideas it took me about like three to five months to come up with everything that i wanted in megas elgar um getting the casting done uh finding the right people to help me work on it was a bit of a process if only because I had never made an audio drama with this scale of production. We had about anywhere between 15 to 20 people helping us out at any given time and that's including like people doing promotional work and and sound design uh, in addition to myself but I did a lot of the work myself as well. Um, but in order to, but getting it started I, I had to very politely ask uh, the owner of the company that I was working for at the time, Melody Gun, um, the producer Hamed uh, listened to everything that I had to say and by everything I had to say I mean I, I kind of spat, spat word salad at him until he's like okay okay calm down just make me a proof of concept and we'll do it jeez <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about the uh, like basic plot of uh, Magus Elgar so uh, people can uh, learn more about it yeah uh, Magus Elgar is a fantasy comedy inspired by the works of Terry Pratchett if you're not familiar with him he wrote the Discworld series and and most recently, uh, one of his books that he paired up with Neil Gaiman just became a television series, uh, Good Omens, oh, yeah. uh, which is on Amazon Prime. Yeah. Highly recommend that. The story of Magus Elgar is about two magi and two scientists working together, uh, scouring the magical world of Hearth to find stamps, scientific tools augmented with magical power, searching for a way to uh, fix them and then help diffuse them before they rip all of reality apart. Very cool. Yeah, I, I, uh, we've been... Uh running some uh, ads for it and it, um, what i've heard so far it sounds it sounds great i'm gonna have to check out more episodes and everything and i recommend everybody else does who would you say inspired you the most uh, i mean besides like terry pratchett or anything but uh, you know who who like inspired you to uh for writing or anything or voice work or anything like that well um terry pratchett was definitely very uh near the top of that list another group was um graham duff and mark gatis who had made a uh, audio drama called called Professor Nebulous on BBC Radio 4 about a couple years ago. It's about 10 years now, I think. 
Um, it was a pair. It was called Professor Nebulous. It was a parody of Doctor Who, um, which I find really funny because one of the people worked on it is the voice of the Daleks, which just seems absolutely <laughs> perfect. That's cool. <laughs> it was such a it was such a popular uh, audio drama like that. They, they actually invited David Tennant, who was Doctor Who at the time, to come in and do a special guest spot. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, what uh, what would you say is like your favorite uh, film or audio drama or book or anything of that nature, like your favorite um, piece of art that you've uh, ever uh, encountered? <laughs> oh, there's a couple of favorites on there. I mean, um, there, there's a lot of the childish ones. Like uh, for some reason, I'm still a fan of the Captain Underpants book series <laughs> boy does that not da- uh, date my age range now, yeah. um the uh but a couple of books that i like is um peter b v brett's demon cycle he did a series of books uh kind of similar to game of thrones if uh the white walkers were more of a prevalent threat hmm. than than just like kind of nearing the the end of a lot of what had been done in mind um because it's uh i think the one book that i got really into was called the warded man which is about a man who uh grafts magical tattoos over his body to give himself uh, effectively superpowers. Wow, cool. um, I'm also a huge fan of um, Simon R. Green's The Night Side. Uh, it's a 14, uh, like it's a, I think it's a 12 book uh, anthology uh, about a uh, supernatural private investigator named John Taylor who has this unnatural gift for finding things in this realm called the Night Side, a un- uh, magical underbelly of uh, London where it's always three o'clock in the morning. Wow. Uh, I'm keeping a lot of these in mind because um, this is Matt, by the way. I've been reading um, the Shannara series, which is like 19 book <laughs> series. Oh, jeez. Um, but yeah, like that's about magic and stuff too, and I just I really love that stuff. Yeah, I mean, like I, I of course I love like a lot of other like I usually love a book that has a really fun twist on an old idea. Like that's why I love so much of Neil Gaiman's books because um, uh, I've been reading a couple of his things re- uh, recently. Uh, American Gods is on my list right now. Uh, the book, not the tv series yeah, it's a great book <laughs> um what um is there anything else you would like to say about uh magus algar that will help people uh get to know uh you know the characters or anything like that that'll you know draw them in more yeah if, if i was to say uh who magus elgar is as a person i i would imagine a a young to middle-aged merlin who's still just so wide-eyed and excited about magic regardless of the bodily harm other people get thrown in in the midst um <laughs> he's uh, which is kind of why his apprentice Udo Malaki is such a great counter to him because all Udo Malaki wants um, in his magical apprenticeship is to not die. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, he, he comes from this this long family history of very very powerful uh, very deadly sorcerers and he's the first magically inclined Malaki of his uh, of 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 his family in generations and all he doesn't even want to do anything exciting or, or crazy with the magic. He just wants to get it out of the way so that he doesn't blow somebody up with it. <laughs> One, um, what advice would you give to anybody that's interested in like uh, getting into audio dramas or acting or anything of that nature? Well, um, there's quite a few things that you can do to get yourself started off. For, first off, getting some lessons for acting would be absolutely the best idea, uh, advice I can give you to start off. But there are places where you can get some practice in without it being too uh, costly. Uh, for example, um, I go to a website called castingcall.club where there's a lot of different audition spaces for amateurs and newcomers where they've, they're have they still trying to get their bearings on what they want to do and a lot of times they'll have like scripts to work with and other things to practice with and kind of get you where you need to be without the pressure of you know trying to get it perfect in one go. Um, for an audio drama I all you really need is a good idea, a microphone, and maybe some free sound effects. You can even record the sound effects yourself. The first audio drama that I did, which has been buried in the annals of the internet history, <laughs> I, I did all the sound effect recordings uh, in my in my dorm room, uh, and I did all my voice acting with one really terrible uh, laptop mic, and people were entertained by it. People enjoyed it. That's very cool. Um, yeah, I mean, most people in dorm rooms are, you know, getting drunk or high and not really... <laughs> 
you know, spending time actually creating something, which is kind of inspiring, too. You know what I mean? If you could, uh, like, you know, cast anybody in one of your audio dramas or work with anybody yourself, you know, famous, uh, who would you uh, who would you cast? You know, it's it's I guess it's just an indication of how much of a uh, voice acting nerd that I am. Mm -hmm. But I would have absolutely adored to have Jim Cummings come in as a, as a, a role or two. Yeah, because he does a little bit of everything. If you're not familiar with Jim Cummings, he does the voice of uh, he does the voice of Tigger and Winnie the Pooh in Winnie the Pooh. But he also does hundreds yeah. of voices <laughs> all over the place. Um, I absolutely adore this man because he absolutely he loves his craft so much and you know ironically uh, one of my favorite performances from him was not actually from like a really uh, big piece of work like he, he like does Pete he does all sorts of voices but the one that I, I, I love the most from him was from a direct to DVD uh, performance he did for Dead Space the movie uh, which is based off of an electronic arts video game from so long ago where he plays Captain Matthias and at one point during the the movie completely loses it and you can hear him like foaming at the mouth and just putting his absolute all into it yeah. and it's such a delight to listen to yeah i know he's been around forever he does like everything from star wars voices to disney voices i i'm yeah i'm, I'm a big fan of voiceover artists so it's kind of cool to talk to somebody that does that so um yeah the um and actually knows who jim cummings is that's cool <laughs> so <laughs> besides me because i'll mention him to people and people are like i don't care but um <sighs> yeah I, I just i i you know i i talk about pop culture stuff all the time and people are just like okay mike we get it um and i'm i'm sitting i'm sitting here in my office where like i've got uh <laughs> jim cummings autograph on my wall right next to don bluths mm. <laughs> That's awesome. What would you say is like your guilty pleasure movie? Because this is a question we're asking everybody that we can, um, you know, like a movie that you might be afraid to admit that you love. OK, you put me on the spot here. That's, I know. <laughs> um, OK, I like a, I'd, I'd say I, I giving a movie would take a little bit for me, but um, I could definitely tell you a game series that, yeah, uh, sure. that that'll work. too. I've got a guilty yeah. pleasure about. OK, I, I am an absolute sucker for um Hideo Kojima's Metal Gear Solid series, cool. uh, mostly because it's it's a it, it is a it's a game series about like uh, this this grizzled, deep voice, gravelly uh, secret agent man who infiltrates bases and tries to prevent nuclear Armageddon <laughs> with giant robots. And it's it's great because like every every inch of this story is stupid and ridiculous <laughs> and over the top, and I love every second of it. I, I do not care that so much of it is this convoluted mess. <laughs> it's just fun. And I'm always consistently entertained when uh, I get to see like Hideo Kojima do his thing, even if there's like a lot of dubiousness on, on how good of a uh, of a of a uh, entertainer that he is. I know uh, he's making a new game called Death Stranding, which nobody even knows what it's supposed to be about. And honestly, I look at it and go, you know, this looks par the course for everything that I've been watching. So I, you know, I just know I'm in for an absolute delight. Um, I'll just grab some chips and watch my mind melt. <laughs> And uh, before we go or anything, is there is there um, good places for people to find you and find more information about Magus Elgar and everything? Yes. Um, you can hear Magus Elgar uh, if you visit MagusElgar.com. If you want to uh, listen to the first three episodes, it's free on YouTube. If you do a Google, if you do a YouTube search for Magus Elgar, we're all, we also have the download page available for all the different places that you can get to it at MagusElgar.com. If you don't want to um, download your own copy of the series, we are streaming it on uh, a new podcast. Uh, you can visit me on Twitter as at Magus Elgar. I'm also on Instagram as at Magus Serling. Um, we also have a Facebook page and the like. You can contact any of those. Uh, we've got like a little email contact page. And if you want to find me directly and see some of the other work that I do aside from Magus Elgar, uh, go to KennedyPhillips.org. That's K-E-N-N-E-D-Y-P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S.org. That's very cool. I yeah. would love to hear from you. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll for sure uh, link link everything that we can in our uh, show notes uh, so people can find you. And again, uh, just thanks for uh, joining us and uh, taking the time to talk to us about uh, your very cool sounding uh, project. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. And I uh, hope to talk to you again sometime soon. All right. Thank you very yeah. much. Have a good night.
A respectable minister takes charge and leads head on. Minister Dobble Trike may be the foremost politician of textiles. As a minister, I have the utmost sensitivity to these situations, and if anyone's sensibilities were harmed, I would have sensed it. But his petty ambitions will almost certainly lead us to unknown danger. How dare you, sir? Unknown danger has its potential for profit. It's exotic. You can hear Minister Trike and his antics in the radio comedy Magus Elgar. Visit Magus Elgar. Elgar.com to download your copy today. Okay, so anyways, we have... Uh, so the whole movie is narrated. Um, like I said, uh, Brendan Fraser did not return. Uh, I just wanted to point out something here about that, though. He says, this is Brendan Fraser on this movie. He said he has no idea why Disney didn't offer him to reprise his role <laughs> as George. He said he would have loved to do it again. But he had, but when they were shooting it, he had already made commitments to do Looney Tunes back in action. Another splendid <laughs> piece of film. Film. Product. Yeah. Anyways, um... <laughs> But but yeah, but uh, the thing is, it's just funny because in this movie they imply he was too expensive, but he probably would have done the movie, you know. They just needed like an excuse to blame him because or, they, or... the narrator at one point said, like when they first introduce uh, Christopher Sh- Showerman or Showerman as uh, as George, they the camera pans up from his feet to his face, mm-hmm. and then the narrator's like, "Wait, who's that?" You know, <laughs> right? And by the way, we find yeah. out. At the end of the movie, the narrator is God. Somehow, it's kind of implied that it doesn't yeah. make any sense why God would be narrating this event in this one person's life. And then, furthermore, God, God can do everything. Though, okay, you know? I get that, but furthermore, that means that he could have just stopped the entire situation from happening altogether instead of waiting to the very last second to pull up um, the dude fake fiance, fake husband and i guess pull him into what heaven so what he gets to go to heaven i don't understand why why does he get to go to heaven yeah he's an asshole know. he should be going to hell unless hell maybe that was maybe that was intended for the sequel the, the sequel, sequel the sequel is going to be lyle in hell <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> or maybe hell actually is in the sky not not below the earth so maybe hell maybe heaven and hell are both up in the sky and one's like half or no, I'm thinking it's way too too much. Thinking it's through way too much. They they didn't know what they were doing. They they literally it makes no sense. It's like it's like Tom Green in that Freddy Got Fingered movie where it's like just scene after scene that doesn't have anything to do with the movie. Like I know, let's have a hand from the sky pick you know Lyle up and take him into the clouds because finally. He he said he 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 insulted the narrator and that that was the one thing that yeah pissed off in there so okay so you're God presumably and you got a giant well maybe hand. uh maybe they just decided that you know after that like like I'm saying the next the, the next yeah, the next the, the next movie would have been God kicking him out of heaven and you know flicking him down into hell okay. with his fingers or something I don't and know. and then he's gonna be like I got the deed to hell I got the deed to hell and he's dancing around a fire or yes. something like that because there's I keep referencing that because there's a scene the big the big premise of the movie is that George has the deed to Ape Mountain because apparently even in the jungle they care about deeds to property but okay and um so I'm pretty sure in the jungle there's no such thing as private property but okay in a but apparently even in the jungle capitalism exists all right so um <clears throat> anyway so um in this movie yeah. in this movie at least I was thinking it was more of like an egalitarian type of situation but okay so um so George has You're thinking way too I much know. <laughs> so George has the deed to this non-existent property to his tree house that he lives with his wife and child and um and it used to belong to ape I'm guessing and then ape decided to move to Las Vegas. Get it? The human wants to live in the jungle, but the gorilla wants to live in human civilization. Ooh, get it? Switcheroo. Ugh. I think that happened in the first movie. I know. Yeah. I'm just I'm saying. Assuming. I'm just, I, I, it's, I, haven't, it's, I don't think I even saw the first one. Yeah, honest. I think I saw it like 20 years ago or something okay. or whatever, you know. I mean, yeah. Who knows? When so, it first came out. <laughs> so I'm guessing that's what happened. So now George has the deed to the Ape Mountain. And in order... 
And for some reason, they want the deed for themselves so they could turn it into a resort so they can just pave the jungle and get rid of the treehouse and all the animals in order to just really ruin George's life, I guess. Which is kind of weird because it's like all you really wanted was for your daughter and granddaughter to come home. Why do you have to also ruin his life more? Grandson. Grandson, yeah. Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't mean... Well, yeah, Angus T. Jones is a dude. Okay, whatever. I... <laughs> As a, um, I, I meant to say grandma and then it turned into gra- whatever. Yeah, then, I gotcha. Um, so, um, you know, why do you need to ruin his life further by destroying his home? I mean, that's kind of like just like adding cruelty on top of cruelty there. It's putting salt in a wound. It is. Basically. I mean, why and why even do that? But anyway, so uh, they, they at one, you know, at one point they, they um, he hires these people these three women who apparently are called Charlie's angels, but it's only because their nickname is the angels. And the guy who works at the front desk at the hotel is named Charlie. And he gave them their towels, Charlie's angels. Get it. Let's make a reference to Charlie's angels for no reason whatsoever. And then that's it. That's the one passing reference to the show. And that's it. I want to get back to the narrator okay, here for go a ahead. second. Yeah. Okay, so the narrator is voiced by uh, this actor Keith Scott, who is a voice actor, pretty much. Um, he was also the narrator in the first film, so he's one of the few people to return. <laughs> um, he uh, also was the was the uh, the 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 the, 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 the um, the narrator, he also did the voice of Bullwinkle and the cartoon Boris Badenoff in uh, the live-action cartoon hybrid movie of The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle, hmm. which was also based on a cartoon created by Jay Ward, which uh, this was as well. So he's pretty much, I think, the one of the go-to guys to be the narrator for uh, Jay Ward um, live-action abominations. I mean, anyways, uh, yeah, if we want to get into get into something interesting someday we should watch the adventures of rocky and bullwinkle you know with uh yeah never saw it um yeah i saw it once yeah if i remember correctly uh let me see let me look this up really quick just to refresh my memory yeah renee russo and uh Jason Alexander play Boris and Natasha in this one. And then Fearless Leader, which is another one of the Russian baddies in this, is uh is played by Robert De Niro. Mm. Robert De Niro. <clears throat> Anyways, um <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going down a weird rabbit hole here. Yeah. But anyways, let's uh let's get back to this film. Um sure. Honestly, okay, one of the I mean, one of the the good things of this movie, I will give it. I'm trying to find good things here, Matt. <laughs> I'm trying to, okay. you know, find the uh diamond in the rough here. The uh I think that Christopher Showerman was a good George. He was all right. He had a char- charisma to him. Yeah. He was pretty good. Yeah. I think a lot of the acting in the movie wasn't bad for what it, they were given. Honestly, I mean, with the exception of, I don't know, a lot of it. They Anyways, I'm um, <laughs> given an acid trip of a script yeah. and um, di- directing. But, I mean, but just... I mean, really, George and Ursula weren't that bad. No, you know? they were fine. Yeah. Just so many weird things happen in the movie that don't make any sense. It was just, it was so trippy to watch because it's like you've got narrations going on. You've got, you got breaking the fourth wall within like the first two minutes of the movie. Uh, and then you got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to fold them. Yeah, you got a Kenny Rogers um, <laughs> lookalike uh, singing his song at the there, at poker game. Yeah, there, there's a poker game that, that Ape is playing it's, while in Vegas. And yeah. you have a Elvis lookalike at the table, and then a Kenny Rogers lookalike, and a random Asian dude who, at one point, karate chops 
not in any kind of racist manner at oh, all. Oh, yeah. At no. All. But no, not there's, at all. There's no racism in this movie. Oh, yeah. No. It reminds me, too, of the whole... Um, oh, yeah. The, the grandmother or mother or whatever. Uh, she's got um, uh, three black guys carrying all of her luggage... And of course, they, you know they were natives of the country, so I guess you can sort of maybe understand know, explain, why they're that way. But, but she's but standing on one of them because she doesn't want to walk through. Like, she uses one of them tiny. as a bridge. So basically. it's like, okay, so we got a white woman standing on top of a black. It just seems very weird. Um, yeah, know. there's a lot of racism and sexism and uh, misogyny and I don't know and a lot of stuff. Yeah, there. This. I mean, it's 2003, which to me is not a long time ago, but. No, I know. mean, and things things have changed in 15 years, but yeah. it's, mm. I don't know, yeah. Disney, you disappoint me. I know, I mean, because it's like you're so, you're so concerned about, you know, making sure that you, that you have 2018 morals and 2011, 2008, but, you know, you have a film from 2003 that breaks those very 2018 morals, but that's yeah. okay. Okay. Mm. By the way, um, weren't you also the company that had extremely racist cartoons? Oh, sorry. Yeah, but anyway, that's all. But that's, that's all, all in the past, oh, okay. so it's okay. Oh, but, but, but wait, not, oh wait, oh, if, unless okay. you're James Gunn, oh, okay, yeah. then your stuff okay, in the past okay. matters. Okay, be, if there's a right wing conspiracy, I, I, I forgot. To I forgot the take rules. You down. Yeah, because apparently, if Mike Cernovich, you know, you know, tattles on someone, then you gotta you gotta cower. Okay, <clears throat> Who, who's a Nazi, by the way? <clears throat> Alleged rapist. Alleged. Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> so we've we we've made it clear that we do not like the fact that Disney fired James Gunn. Okay. Unless more comes out, you know, I mean, I might have to edit this podcast yeah, if, if more comes if out before happens, I happens then we, but, we're yeah. proven wrong. Okay, fine. Yeah, I mean, if but, it, if it turns out he's really a despicable human being, then but, whatever. But in the future, don't take your calls from actual Nazis. Yes. Actual Nazis. Not Someone I disagree with is a Nazi. And I mean, I can completely, no. I mean, we're going off on a tangent yeah, about this, but I can completely understand them sticking to their guns, no pun intended, because they're actually stuck against not, the guns. They're not sticking yeah, to their yeah. guns. <laughs> but I can understand them sticking to their first you know, option where they did irrationally decide to fire him. But my thing is, is in the future, maybe not listen to White Ring, White White Ring? <laughs> Well, it is kind of white. Wait, white ring. There we go. White ring. I meant to say right wing. Or white, white, <laughs> white wing. Well, white it, ring. It's a Freudian slip. Yes. Kind of. <laughs> Anyways, right wing. You know, crazy Nazi. Alt right. Alt right. Bright biter. Yeah. God damn it! No, I'm saying bright, bright bite, barters. Bright barters conspiracy theory stuff come yeah. on you're disney because because my thing is is like i know it was a tit for a tat sort of thing with where they just wanted to take down somebody because yeah. roseanne was taken down and it's just it's it's a stupid thing it's i i mean my thing is this i mean i understand why roseanne was fired what she did was racism and it was it was an actually at an act and it, it was, wasn't just words because in that case, words are racism. Right. What James Gunn did were jokes. Right. Bad, inappropriate. I do not support these jokes right. in one way whatsoever. But at the time, he has apologized for them profusely. Even before, before he, he was got hired caught or whatever. Even so. before he was hired by Disney, right. he apologized. So for it wasn't him. some like some kind of fake, insincere. You know, apology that like Alex Jones would make when he's caught red-handed and he goes, "Oh, well, I didn't really mean to yeah. say that Sandy Hook wasn't really real, even though you actually said that." Did say times. that, but whatever. We're kind of going on that weird. But, but anyways, <laughs> George of the Jungle Two <laughs> is a um, movie. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, Sorry. yeah. So, it's a, so, it's so, a movie. So, so what else do we have to say about this? I don't know. I I'm still just kind of fixated on some of the weird parts of it, like the whole bestiality thing going on. Like I thought they would just reference it because that one time when yeah yeah the the one the one time okay there's Ursula's friend. I don't know if she ever got a name. I don't know whatever. I don't but remember her name either. She uh she asked George if he had a had a brother, and he's like, I have a brother ape. And she's like, Ooh, an ape. 
Mm, okay, that's kind of like, weird. Like she was attracted to that, and then I thought it would end there, but it didn't. They kept it going. And later then later on. on in the movie, her and ape make out, and and he take he literally pulls her off her, screen. Yeah, which kind of implies that you know maybe they went and got busy with an ape, a yes. human, human woman. How did she survive that encounter and not have her bones like broken and crushed because it's a gorilla? You're thinking way more and gorillas this than I did. <laughs> gorillas weigh like 800 pounds more than most humans do, if not more than that. And their arms are extremely strong. Okay, anyway, so apparently she's got a thing for apes, which is weird. Because uh, it's in a, biz, a Disney busy, well, in a Disney film, they're promoting bestiality. As a joke, okay, I get it, but. A really weird and inappropriate joke, Disney. I'm, I'm surprised that you would go there. I, I'm, you know, maybe you should, you know, fire yourselves because that was pretty, very yeah, vulgar, it, very vulgar. And plus, too, there's, there's, she, you know, she didn't, she didn't consent to it, and you care so much about that, you know, because part of James Gunn's tweets that were so horrible is that he made jokes about that. So it's, it's weird that you know you would somehow think it's funny. And I mean. Uh, it, it, I believe this movie is, like, rated PG as well. Yeah, PG, so it's like, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So, so it's, like, yeah. Whatever. Sorry, I'm not bitter. Yeah. I think that's true. I didn't even really even know who James Gunn was that much beforehand because I I haven't even seen any of the Guardian movies. Yeah, yet. but it's so, still, it just sets a weird precedent, and yeah. it doesn't even matter. I know. Um, but anyways, uh, regardless of that, and uh, so, so, uh, So yeah, gorillas are apes. Okay. I was just looking this up. Good. I was just kind of, con- <laughs> I, I was trying to figure out the difference between gorillas and apes. So is there or what? Um, yeah, basically the the most this is, is what is the difference between monkeys, apes, and gorillas? The most immediate distinction between apes and monkeys is the presence of a tail in monkeys. Hmm. As for gorillas, they are categorized as apes, along with chimpanzees, bonobos, orangutans. And humans. I gotcha. So, so we... All, all girls well, well are... actually, the fact that she's attracted to apes, mm-hmm. technically humans are apes. So I guess it's not bestiality so much as a precursor Well, it is. Human. It is it, it, it is bestiality oh, okay. regardless because you're still with a different oh, animal. Oh, okay. I gotcha. But we're of the same, you know... I don't know. Uh, same... Uh, I don't know what they call it, you know, same same uh, animal family. Okay. But uh <laughs> yeah, there's Yeah, but we're technically apes, I guess. Okay. So uh and then there's lesser apes, which Not if are, I have anything to say about yeah. boy. We were not descended from monkeys, okay? Yeah, there's lesser apes which are uh, no, we're not because we're descended from I, apes. I know, but that's what they always say. Yeah, and they say like, monkeys because my... but the problem is is people think apes are monkeys, but they're not. I always love it too when they say like my my granddaddy wasn't a monkey. It's like, yeah, I know your grandfather wasn't a monkey, you fucking idiot. Of course, it would only be like a hundred years old. <laughs> if he was, that's interesting. So apparently, humans only evolved in the hundred past hundred years. <laughs> and then on top of that, this movie perpetuates the idea that apes are monkeys. Right. Oh yeah. Because at right, one point, yeah. dur- during he he ha- he's um, ape is doing a show in Vegas at a little lounge in a casino. He lost all of his money. In the yeah, he he game. he had to pay off a debt for seventeen years to Lyle, which I don't know how that works. That's weird. Yeah, but um, he's he's singing a rendition of um, "Hey Hey We're the Monkeys," but it's "Hey Hey I'm a Monkey," and the thing is, you're not a monkey. You're not. You're a fucking gorilla. Maybe that's the point. So you know what that does? That just teaches kids. Wrong <laughs> genetics and biology and right. science. Or maybe it was meant to show how Lyle was a p- either a piece of shit or just an idiot that doesn't know any better. And made him sing that and song. Made him. And then, of course, but, he knows he's not a monkey, so he's got to sing this and humiliate himself every night for 17 years. And, yeah, but that's, <laughs> hey, I'm a monkey. But that's not how it played off in the movie, in I my know. opinion. Well, but I don't know. He but might then, be a good performer. I mean, yeah. <laughs> he just he knows to let his ego aside and just do the job and. Then he'll end up smoking or drinking to you know get rid of the pain later on, form an addiction, and stuff like having that. sex with a woman yeah. later <clears throat> in the movie. Um, anyways, uh, 
So, so did we mention yet that a woman has sex with an ape? Yeah, I think we've we've covered that enough. Oh, okay, uh, I'm just making sure. In the hand of God, taking Lyle to somewhere in the clouds. Um, did we mention that a woman has sex yes, with an ape? I think okay. we. I don't think we need to. I think we we've told the audience enough about the weirdness of that. <clears throat> so what else was weird? Do you remember um, coconut um, stuff? Oh, there, the soccer it, game. I'm sorry, the coconut yeah. ball game. There was a point where a woman had sex with an yes, ape. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I just wasn't sure if okay. we caught yeah, that I did. yet. I okay. was the one yeah. that first was really concerned about it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah, no. making sure that the audience knows that that. It's, yeah. I mean, it was not on screen. It was off screen. Strongly implied. Yeah, so coconuts, huh? Yeah. They had a coconut ball game, which is basically, basically soccer. Basically soccer. And apparently the or gorillas. Or football. Yeah. Apparently the gorillas know how to play football and then all of the women gorillas are cheerleaders because i guess sexism exists in them um, well the, we're assuming the they're the women gorillas we don't know well, that's though. true yeah, it's actually true we don't know actually I mean, but it, yeah but there was a cheerleader section of gorillas doing the wave and and uh ursula was supposedly too ugly to be a, a cheerleader you get it because she's different than them Ugh. so um you know, how they learn how to play soccer and do cheerleading moves, I'm not sure, but whatever. Because um, George spent his whole life in the jungle, so he is pretty much a jungle creature. I don't know. Do they, have, do they have TV? I'm confused. In the jungle? No. I don't they got really so. good cell phone reception. Yeah, well, that's there. the other thing, yeah. yeah. Grandma, whatever her name is. Christina Pickles' character? What's her name? In the movie, uh, do you remember? The, I don't know her name. The character was... Whatever, Ursula's mom. Yeah, the character was... Uh, <laughs> Beatrice. Yeah, Beatrice gets a phone call and like, immediately picks up the phone and like perfect reception just like that. No delay of service, nothing. Just like instantly. Again, this is a jungle. Well, she's rich, so she and, can afford really good cell phones. Well, sure, but it's 2003 rich. She's got I, like I a, don't think any richness would be able to. I mean, she's got like a super duper Verizon plan. Unless she has her own personal satellite just for her <laughs> phone, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> That's possible, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just it was just such a bizarre movie. I mean, it's even more bizarre than the Buttercream Gang two or Turbulence three, which we might talk about some other time. Yeah, because um, that's another terrible, horrible movie, but but funny in its own way. Um, this is just not funny. It's just terrible, really. I mean, I don't know. Just... Did I mention yet that a woman, <laughs> human woman, a human yeah. human woman, yeah, and an ape. Mm-hmm. You know, like 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 an ape. Yeah, I mean, he speaks with a British accent, but he's an ape. Yeah, they kiss in the movie. Yeah, and then he pulls her off screen. Yeah, implying that he's going to have sex with her. Right, but Beatrice was not non consensual. Yeah, he just that was in this movie. It was in this movie, so it's two. Well, I think it was a different gorilla with Beatrice. I think. Yeah, it was, but it was a different one, but. In this movie, yeah, in this, in this Disney film, yes, Th- this movie, mm-hmm. Matt, I, why? I hear you. I know why. I I don't have any say over what they did in two thousand three. I was, I, I didn't even know knew, know this movie was out in two thousand three. I was too busy watching School of Rock constantly, every other day or whatever. But why? Playing guitar and reading about books and reading about books. Wow, no, reading books. I, yeah, like I was her. reading about books. Yes. <laughs> I like to watch movies. Yeah, about, about movies. movies. Yeah. Actually, I do. Well, yeah. But anyways, um, <laughs> uh, I don't why? Know. I don't know. I can't. <laughs> can't help you on there. I don't know. My head hurts, Matt. I know. Why does my head hurt? Because you witnessed something that was very strange and bizarre, and very um, disorienting. It was very disorienting. Uh, movie, I think, is what it is was. Is there anything else we need to say about this movie? I don't think so. I mean, I mean, this one's one of our shorter podcasts, even though I think we have yeah. more to say about it because of all the crazy things. But a lot of stuff is really just kind of going through me. I don't even remember a lot of the things I, I actually wanted to talk about, but then I forgot about because it was just so... Oh, yeah, the deed thing. Okay, so when he gets the deed, it goes, Lyle celebrated... Um, acquiring the deed in a very mature fashion and then it jumps to him literally skipping 
jumping up and down in his hotel room going, I got the deed, I got the deed. Again, a year later, he was um, nominated for an Academy Award yeah, for I Best want, Supporting I want, Actor. I want this timeline to be uh, understood very clearly. A year after him jumping around, bouncing up and down, going, I got the deed. He was I in got, Sideways. Yes. A year later. With so. Paul Giamatti, and it's a really good movie. So okay. he, uh, he lucked out, I think, after this movie. Cause well, I mean, he, he had already had a pretty successful well, that's, career. Maybe that's and I mean, this, yeah. plus the thing is, I mean, it was, you know, because like, he was really well respected as a comedic actor from Wings and mm. other things. Wings and other things. Oh, I, I like Ooh, that. Ooh, that it's rhymed. Like, it's like a restaurant. Wings, Wings and other things. things. Yeah. We should open that up. We should. Yeah. With well, our podcast money. Speaking yes. of podcast money, so last night um, when yes. I was preparing to watch this monstrosity of a film, because I knew yes. it was going to be terrible, I was like, you know, I think I need some something to snack. I need some snacks to kind of hold me through this movie. So I got uh, a pack of the chocolate Pop-Tarts, and I, Pop-Tart is one of my favorite oh, snacks. Oh, I love and- Pop-Tarts. Kellogg's par- yes. Pop-Tarts. Kellogg's Pop-Tarts. Mm-hmm. The... Uh, the, 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 the number one, number one toaster pastry made by Kellogg's that I love. Yeah. So if you would like to sponsor us, Kellogg's, you can reach me personally at Mike at Cullen Park dot com. You can also find us on Facebook and all that other stuff. If that doesn't work, I will respond. I will. We, we we're more than happy to to, you know, tout the wonderful deliciousness of you know your pop tarts, your your strawberry frosted mm. pop tarts, your your chocolate frosted pop tarts, your uh, brown sugar and cinnamon yeah, pop tarts. Okay yeah, you know all these new flavors you got like s'mores and um, um, the s'mores, s'mores. <laughs> uh, green jelly. Who knows? You know, just keep keep keep, keep them popping, poppin'. keep, keep them popping, keep, keep them popping. <laughs> Once you pop, no, that's another. No. <laughs> Anyways, um. <yeah. laughs> Hey, folks, this is uh, Michael E. Cullen II um, from the podcast that you're listening to right now, along with Matthew Haas. We just wanted to tell you about our great, great podcast called Super. It's called All Too Real. And on that show, what, what do we do, Matt? We, we watch biopics, and then we talk about whether or not the movie matched up with the real story or not. So we, we, It's a lot we, more exciting than that, though. Yeah, so, 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 so we... We analyze the real story and the real story. Get it? Get it? Real. You know? Yeah, they're spelled differently, yeah. folks. You can guess which one I said which way. Uh-huh. Anyways, um, so uh, sometimes we have a guest, sometimes we don't. Um, but we uh, talk about great, sh- great, uh, great movies like uh, Shattered Glass yes. and The Social Network and uh, a Futile and Stupid Gesture, among others. Um, those are some of the ones that we've covered so far, and uh, we're going to cover a lot more. So uh, please uh, subscribe on Stitcher, um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you uh, find your great, fun podcasts. And be sure to share it with your friends. Do it. Do it. Do it. And make sure you're not afraid to get all too, too real. real. Bye-bye. So, <clears throat> so, so I don't know if you noticed in this movie, Matt, mm. but there was this scene. Towards the end of the movie, where a woman, a human woman, <laughs> made out with a uh, yeah. with, with an with an ape, yeah, yeah, you know, an, an ape, like you know, he had a British accent and everything. He's played by John Cleese, yeah, yeah. Um, they they made out, yeah, on screen, and then he pulled her off screen, and implied that he's going to have sex with her. So. Does that count as though John Cleese, the actor, did that very thing? I don't think he was the guy in the suit. No, I get that, but since he had the voice, does he count? Maybe. As the gorilla? Maybe we should ban John. I Cleese. think that's what I'm saying because he did something that was kind of, you know, not not very. But he was paid to do it. Well, it's true. So I don't know if that makes it better well, or worse. Paid, I mean, well, that makes it worse, I think. But whatever. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, there's a there's a part in the movie where that happens, but um, yeah, I I don't know. I just don't know anymore when they come up with weird. My brain hurts it's, really it's, bad. And yeah. Well, we had a headache last time when we talked about when we talked. What was it about? Oh, it was a bigger, fatter liar. Yeah, last we time. had yeah, headaches was... about that too because that was. But this is even stranger than that. At least that yes. had a coherent. Plot. It, ha- it had a plot. I mean, it was just the rehashing of the first movie's plot. But and this still... is kind of a rehash of the first movie's plot of this too. Oh, I think wow. in certain ways because it was basically Lyle trying to win over. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because, you know, he loved her. her and the parents helping and shit. God. Yeah. Interesting fact, the uh, mm-hmm. mother that is played by Christina Pickles in this movie was was uh, played by um, the uh, mother from the mother grandmother character from Two and a Half Men yeah. in the first movie, which is interesting. It is weird. Yeah. Um, I'm blanking on that actress's name right now. I don't know if it matters, but um, I'm going to look it up just because well, I yeah, need why to. Not? I mean, um, there's, there's, <clears throat> but yeah, I would, I would not. Oh yeah, Holland it. Taylor. That's there. We name. go. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> I absolutely would not recommend this movie to anyone, though. Not in a date night, especially not in a date night. What about to your enemies? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um force them to watch it if that you know just put it on the screen just play do you it. think we could get like you know like mm-hmm. if they sent this down to like guantanamo bay we could get like yeah. you know terrorists to admit to things if they had to sit here and watch they this probably movie? would yeah this movie is, is that bad that they probably would actually confess even within the first two minutes probably yeah but you know there's other people that would want to show it to you know <clears throat> uh yeah <laughs> to make them confess to certain things mm-hmm not not saying names. No. You know you know what I, I you know what I want to confess. What? I was watching this movie, you know. Yeah. And at the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah. Th- th- there was a human woman <laughs> who made out with an ape. Yeah. He pulled her off screen, <clears throat> and it was implied that they had sex. Yeah. That, that In happened. a Disney movie. That happened. Yes. <laughs> bestiality yeah it's disney for you you know they got very strict um morals but then again i mean they have a whole movie about bestiality it's called beauty and the beast oh shots fired yes <laughs> it's a uh, stockholm syndrome and uh and um bestiality <laughs> yeah wrapped in, in the one. one movie yeah um so <laughs> anyways folks um hopefully we have a better movie for you next time yeah, this one wasn't as long or, as our normal or something one. else to talk about or Whatever we're gonna do next time, we'll we'll let you know at the end here. Um, yeah. You know, be sure to follow us on social media. You know, give us money if you want. Yeah. You, you know, know, if you uh, want to advertise, let me know. Patreon, you can you know throw us yeah. a few dollars as a yeah. donation. Just you know, show your appreciation. Yes. It's fine. All that info will be on our website and whatnot. Mm-hmm. You can check out everything at CullenPark dot com. I'll have everything up there. And uh, for now, I'm uh, Michael E. Cullen the second, and I am Matthew Haas, and Pop tarts, keep it popping. Yes, keep it popping. She, she was a, a human woman, yeah. <laughs> and there was an ape. Yep. Okay, bye, folks. <laughs> Thanks for listening to All Too Real Two Podcast, a Cullen Park production, produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen the Second. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at CullenPark.com.